What's up guys, so I finally got the AMD Ryzen system put together and I would like to share my thoughts, my overclocking experience rather, with the Ryzen R3 1200 CPU. This little CPU is priced at $110 and yet performs as well or better than the more expensive i5-7500. So let's go ahead and see how well this little thing performs. The R3 1200 comes with a Wraith Stealth cooler, which performs pretty good for being a stock cooler. But I had the uh, Spire cooler that came with the R1700, which I had laying around, so I decided to use that instead for overclocking the R3 1200. AMD did a great job with this cooler that even at 1.4 volts, the temperatures never exceed 64 Celsius on the R3 1200 at 4 GHz. Jumping straight into the BIOS of the ASUS B350F Gaming ROG Strix motherboard, we go straight into the AI Tweaker tab, and here we are greeted by a number of overclocking options. For me, manual overclocking worked best, so I skipped the included preset. Setting the core ratio to 40 gives me a 4GHz overclock, but the system was not stable with the memory running at the rate of speed of 3200MHz. So after a BIOS update and a few more tries, I figured out that it is best to set the RAM, uh, the RAM speed manually to 3066MHz. The timings I manually set to 16, 18, 18, 18, and 37, corresponding to the 3200MHz timings, and I bumped up the voltage to one35 volts. As for the CPU voltage, I left that on auto and that sets me at 1.4 volts and that gives me a stable overclock, never going over 1.4 volts. So let's go ahead and boot right into the system and start with some synthetic benchmarks. Now please keep in mind guys that I'm not going to be comparing this CPU much to other options out there because to be honest, the way I see it, for the price, there is no better option out there. This thing kills the i3s from Intel and gives the 7th generation i5 processors a run for their money at almost half the cost. So I will focus just on this little chip and what it can do for you for $110. If you want to learn more and want to get more uh, thorough details, check out the folks at Hardware Unbox. Steve did a pretty good review on this chip uh, along with the R3-1300X and Intel's offerings. In the Corona 1.3 benchmark, the R3-1200 CPU finished the image rendering at 6 minutes and 38 seconds, which is pretty impressive. In Cinebench, the uh, R3-1200 managed to pull out a score of 615 points in the multi-threaded test. Very impressive compared to my i5-6500 score of 552 points. In Geekbench, the R3-1200 scores 4,482 points for the single core score and 13,345 points for the multi-threaded score. Battlefield 1 is a game known for pushing system hardware hard. The R3-1200 performs without a flaw, maxing out the RX-470 graphics card in this title without a sweat, upping to a GTX 1060 or RX 580 graphics card and with this CPU it will make a great gaming rig for those of you looking to get the best CPU for the money without bottlenecking your GPU. Also keep in mind that Ryzen loves higher frequency memory so the higher the frequency the higher the performance you will achieve in this title. Doom is a game that will take advantage of a multi-core CPU, so here the R3-1200 performs smoothly, not even maxing out in this title, while the GPU was running at its full potential without CPU bottleneck. Also keep in mind that I am using the Vulkan API in this game, along with an AMD graphics card, so your results may vary depending on the graphics card that you have. And as you might know, Vulkan does favor AMD graphics cards.
Grand Theft Auto 5 is optimized for quad-core CPUs and here we see the R3 1200 CPU at times maxing out as expected in this title but without creating a bottleneck. The RX 470 is able to stretch its legs and run the game at very high settings with 2 times MSAA at 1080p. In contrast with my G4600 which periodically would max out and cause frame drops into the 20s, the R3 1200 was able to run the game smoothly even while driving and enduring online gameplay. So after so many years, I'm glad to see that AMD is back in the game. Uh, this little CPU here is worth the money. This is probably the best bank for the buck right now out there. And I would highly recommend this to someone looking for, for a good CPU that will not bottleneck their mid-range graphics cards. Anyway, this is all I got for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit like, subscribe for more techie videos coming up in the future. And I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.